Previously on Quest Friends. And what brings you to Charmande? Mr. Mako. We're looking for Mr. Mako. So you're looking for trouble? No, I'm looking for Mr. Mako. Now, before you hear the rumors and get impassioned, I did take a job with Queen Armalu in Charmande. But, but, I think I'm onto something both you and the professor will want to know about. The wife and I also work together to give you this pin. So this is a formula for what Mr. Mako was working on, called Annex. It would be a shame, wouldn't it? The queen did know something. She's gonna give you a dead look. Well, things don't always work out the way they're expected to. Thank you so much, and if you ever need anything, right outside the door is your attendant. He's not perfect, but he he was he was the only person who was available, so I apologize for that. And sporting a very large mustache and a very large frown. Ugh, you again. again. Hello! How are you? I see you still have the hat, ma'am. <laughs> That's good. I will always have the hat. So how did you get here so quickly? We took the tour. He just turns to himself, I fucking hate the tour. <laughs> Wait, is this the border, the border guard? It absolutely <laughs> is. <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't sure if we were meant to actually know who he was. Yeah, me neither. So Shock will go, oh, it's you. We met you at the edge of the city. What do you mean by that? A man can have multiple jobs. There's nothing wrong with that. Isn't serving the kingdom one job, though? Feels like more. Hey, size. I need to say this. Hello, my name is Don. I am here to help and serve you in any way you need. Ask me anything and I will assist. Salutations, Don. My name and Misha is just going to introduce themselves to Don. Did you do that at the border? Yes, but Misha is going to do it again. Okay. <laughs> Don is staring at you. He is dead inside. Uh, I was just going to, hey, nice to see you again. Uh, we're we're going to go. <laughs> and just, he's just going to go. Don, can I, can I call you Donnie? Dono? Donette? Dee Dee Donut. What do you need, ma'am? I'm not holding your rat. <laughs> I was just gonna say you can uh, probably go home. Not allowed to do that. I need to follow all of you to your locations as per Miss Vera's rules. But we're going to different places. Yeah. Well, that's not sustainable. You have to figure out something. I'm afraid that Miss Vera did not confirm those rules. She said we could move freely. It's it's true. I know what you're trying to do, sir. I remember you doing it at the border. And he pulls out a little booklet with rules and he says, But this time I'm prepared, sir. Rule 76-9-B question mark. All guests must stay together with their attendant at all times to ensure their safety and happiness. But what if our safety and happiness is not ensured by this rule? Can we then break it? He flips a few more pages. Well, I suppose you're right. I would be fine going with just one of the two groups and letting some of you go on your own. And he gives a look to Ellie. <laughs> Well, Misha and I are just staying in the palace, so, you know, we'll be- we'll be fine. I think he's gonna shoot an I'm sorry glance at Ellie. Look, Donet, Dono, Dino, don't follow me. Uh. It's better for all of us if you don't follow me. Are you trying to intimidate? Yes. Nine. Nine? Uh -uh. I'm sorry, ma'am. I have to follow the logic of the system. And the logic of the system does say that those going out would be under more danger than those coming in. Staying in. Those staying in. I haven't slept in four days. <laughs> <laughs> you could just take a nap. <laughs> Not till all my shifts are over, sir. I've got two left. How understaffed is this palace? Come on, Donut. Hopper's concerned for the working conditions. <laughs> this is a side goal now. Improve the working conditions of this palace. 
This is not OSHA compliant. So we are going to start with our party of four, but not our typical party of four. This one is comprised of Ellie, Jacques, Jesse, and Don. Yeah, so you're all walking. Jesse is proudly marching forward, and they're grilling both Ellie and Jacques on a whole host of questions about what it's like to explore and and, and adventure with hopperscotch. <laughs> is it great? And like, you know, is this rumor true? Is that not? You know, what what's a calzone? Have you had one before? Uh, it's a calzone. What's Excuse the you. What's a Calzone? Have you had it before? Stuff like that. And then Don is reluctantly but diligently following about five feet behind you. Oh, donut. Right now you're just walking towards one of the four districts on the Antil. Buck wants to, as smoothly as he can, which isn't very, mention, so you've been traveling with Hopperscotch before? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I've never I've never traveled with, with Hopperscotch. Um, he's just... I really look up to him. I've been, you know, I I, I remember the first time I I, I heard of, of the great things he did to, to, to help a town. And I don't know, I've just been following him ever since and, and, and reading up on his adventures. You probably know even more about Hopper Scotch than I do. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, you, you've you met him. Like, you, you've talked to him and stuff. I've just heard stories. And, and you know, those can only mean so much. I'd be interested in hearing some stories. Oh, of course, yeah. You said he used to have another companion he traveled with, a Miss Lorraine. Oh, yeah, oh no. Oh, Miss Lorraine. No, she's so tricky. No, Miss Lorraine, she um is like... I, I, have you ever heard of the idea of like there were two brothers like the yin and the yang and like one needed the other like the, she's she's his yang whenever hopper scotch goes to fix things that's because miss lorraine is causing trouble in those places and of course he always wins and it's always okay in the end but no it's like it, it's like wherever one of them is the other one is is there causing trouble and it's it's just it's I don't know. And like, they they claim to, you know, all the reports claim to hate each other. But if you really hate someone that much, would you really spend so much time with them? That is all very interesting. It's all really painful to listen to <laughs> on my end. Uh, all right. So then you're going to you're going to keep on walking unless you have more questions. <laughs> I mean, he'll probably ask, and we don't need to really show that so we can get to the rest of the action, but he'll probably ask for more stories about Hopper Scotch because he's genuinely curious. Hallie, give me a d20 roll. 12. Um, yeah, and, and they're they're pretty all right. There's like one or two embarrassing ones, but they're not too embarrassing. Um, but you still got a little bit of ammo against Hopscotch. God damn it. <laughs> For a second, I want everyone to know that I thought I rolled a 21. And I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I'm amazing! And then I was like, oh no, Hallie, that number doesn't exist on this die. <laughs> Alright, uh, Jesse's gonna take a turn at one of the districts, which is called the Sesky District. And as Jesse explains, the way the districts are made is that in the mountainside, the anthills form four images. One of a sun, one of a tanager bird, one of a crocus flower, and one of a sesky, which is like a dog with kind of like dragon-like scales. And the sesky district is the officially sanctioned black market. It's really vibrant and exciting. You see stands selling numerous things, some sketchy and some concerningly innocuous. Uh, this is the only part of the district where you have animals going around, so you have Anines going, Anine! Anine! And in fact, uh, if you walk, you'll see one. It looks like it's trying to sell things. You see an Anine holding, like, a smaller Anine. Uh, and then you see uh, another guy in the corner saying, Come see Stinley's! Magical House of Wonders! All the most magical things in all of Numenera! It's a veritable house of mystery! Half the people are dressed really vibrantly, and then the ha other half are in really drab, greenish clothes. And you can see in the clothes very clear imprints of vest-like armor and two capsule-sized bumps on their shoulders. Which, if you remember the way armor works, means that probably half this town is cops. Just, like, very poorly undercover. Jesus. Ellie's glaring at the cops. <laughs> I don't trust authority. Shock is gonna, like, sidle over to Ellie and sort of try to whisper, Do you think we can we can ditch the, the guy from the palace? How, how are we gonna do this? I mean, usually my escapes aren't very sneaky. <laughs> 
That's a good point. Maybe we can lose him when we reach Miss Mob. I think that'd be best. As you're walking through these hallways, which remember, it's like kind of like dirt above you, dirt beneath you, dirt to the side, and then open air on the southern facing side of it. And you've seen a couple of like outcroppings, like, you know, some are wooden, some are like really nice outcroppings where people have, you know, maybe bigger storefronts on the southern side. And what you eventually see is you see kind of one of those like manufactured ponds. So you see some stones, and then you see about, I'd say maybe diameter of 20 feet, a little pond that seems to be on the southern side overflowing kind of in like a waterfall. Don't worry how water gets back up there. And connected on a post next to this pond, you see what looks like a covered wagon, but it's a little bigger, and it's a boat. So imagine like uh, the covered wagon back, and then just boat in front of it, a general boat-like space. You see a sign that has the M logo, the one with the M on top and then the M with the mustache. And it says, Mauve and Mako's School for Explorers and Medics. And Jesse turns over and says, that's it, that, that, that's, that's the way she is. So as you walk forward, you see three people. You see an elderly woman holding a cane with a T handle standing near the canopy. And to her right, it basically looks like a pail, like just a large floating rusted pale and on the deck you see a bunch of ice and you see this very young person essentially standing there with a sword drawn so they're kind of slipping and sliding on the ice as these wooden figures pop up on the boat like from the deck and he bats them back down like whack-a-mole and after doing that a few times suddenly you see this young person turn around and you see their eyes flash for a second and their irises change color and they turn and they start swinging behind them Almost as soon as they start swinging, a figure pops up from the deck and gets knocked back down. As soon as that happens, you see the woman look disapprovingly at the young individual and say, Everett, what have I told you about using your nano abilities? You can't just rely on the abilities you have. You have to be able to go blind. Everett turns over. Well, I mean, if if I have it, can't I use it? Everett, you you gotta be able to use every part of your body. You can't just rely on one ability. Uh, You nanos. Uh, Miss Mauve! Miss Mauve! Oh, Jesse, it's a pleasure to see you. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm I'm doing great. I I have Hopper Scotch's friends with me. Who? (laughs) Well, if you're friends of Jesse's, then you're friends of mine. Uh, You you can take a break, Everett. And you see her cane, which has this uh, line of icy blue fluid. You see her turn the T-handle cane, and that icy blue fades away and is replaced by a fiery red. And she places her cane down on some of the ice, which you just see slowly melt and evaporate away. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Miss Mauve. I run this facility. Treadmill, do you mind cleaning up everything around there? And she points to the pail, which starts going around and, and, and cleaning up some of the, the debris and scooping it inside of itself. Treadmill! I'm sorry, I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> oh, poor Zumi. How far you fallen? Zumi, what has he done to you? <laughs> I couldn't think of a good name that wasn't Zumi. You just wanted to have a Y onto, like, any verb. <laughs> Treddy. Like... <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Treddy, do you mind cleaning that up? All right, how's that? Is that better? It's better. Is I Treddy accept better? Treddy. Okay. It sounds like Teddy. <laughs> Call him a Treddy bear. <laughs> that was a really bad pun, I'm sorry. Uh, Shock will just sort of look around awkwardly, say, hello, wave. We, my friend and I, uh, my, my name is Shock. This is Ellie. I'm Ellie. We were wondering if we could ask you some some questions. She looks at you for a second, then turns back and says, Oh, Don, it's a pleasure to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. She turns over to Jesse and says, Jesse, c- can I trust these guys? They're with, you know. She starts motioning towards Don. Can you go home now? Ma'am, I'm supposed to stay with you until I'm done. Well, you are. I mean, it's just like at a room, right? Where you stand outside while we go inside. We'll just go inside the boat and, and, and you'll you'll stay outside. And that's, that's the same thing. It's the same thing. You're still right here keeping an eye on us. Figuratively. You know, I think that's a marvelous idea. Don, darling, can you just stay outside and watch the boat? Don grumbles and Mauve takes you all inside. It's a marvelous idea. Hey. I was very strongly tempted to tell him that he could stop since 
he already is done. <laughs> Give them some XP points, Kyle. Tom and Emily, you each get an XP. Yes. Yes! <laughs> you discovered two puns. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. So she walks the three of you into this small canopied-like space. It's kind of like a covered wagon. So you've basically got two benches on the side, and the only really fancy thing you see attached to one of the walls, kind of like a mantelpiece, you see uh, a rapier that seems to be kind of held up and not used anymore. Oh, please, please, take a seat. How can I help you today? Bea, before we start, I just, I was curious, Mauve. What's your favorite time of day? Well, or night. I, or night. Well, I I tend to like the day more than anything else. Do you have it's fondness n- for clocks? N- no. I think people who follow clocks are relying too much on predictability. If you try to plan everything out, then nothing's going to go right. But if you try to plan nothing out, well, then nothing can go wrong. <laughs> oh, Jesse. You ever killed a man? You you two aren't cops, are you? Because you have to tell me. <laughs> like that's that's how the rules of Charmande work. You have to tell me if you're cops. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not we're not we're not cops. We we don't know. I don't get along with cops. Well, in that case, can I get you anything to drink? And she picks up the small bowl and starts swishing it around a little bit. Water is nice. Well, all right. She takes the bowl and like pours it down and you see the fluid come out and form into the shape of a glass and then the rest of it continue to pour down and make a glass of water. Well, careful, that only lasts about five minutes or so. Thank you. A- actually, we um we were wondering if you could help us. We came to this city looking for a Mr. Mako. We thought he might know how to cure a uh, kind of sickness where a black spider gets under your skin. I stabbed a, it. A black it didn't work. I'm sure he could help you, but unfortunately he's not He's not available right now. We've heard. Um, a woman at the palace, Vera. She sneers at that a little bit. You aren't friends? Well, I will say that Vera is the most interesting woman in the city, and that we came here specifically to meet her. But no, we're not friends. She's uh, actually uh, the woman I met who really likes clocks. Okay, you're gonna have to be more clear, ma'am. I don't understand what you're talking about. Shot gives a look over at Ellie and says, I don't know exactly what my friend is talking about, but I think we might be in a lot of danger. I think Vera has been lying to us, and I think I might have helped her get something that Mr. Mako was working on. Oh yeah, the the cure for the queen or whatever nonsense like that. I don't know what her intentions are for it, but I suspect she has selfish means. She told us that she wanted to use it to get Mr. Mako out, and that she knew he was innocent. She has no interest in that. Why would you want to break someone out when you're the one who locked him up in the first place? Hello, and welcome to the announcement break for episode 9 of Quest Friends. I am Kyle, your GM, and I've got some things to talk to you about today. First, just a couple of things to clear the air. Uh, As I said last week, Ari's audio was a bit weird for this session. I checked next session, so the next couple of episodes should be good. So we just got to get through this one before we get back to our typical audio quality. I also just want to deal with the horrible, terrible fact that I had a random NPC called the Ninth World Numenera. Numenera is the name of technology. Ninth World is the name of the world. Also, uh, just to quickly explain the Zoomy thing, a lot of the characters in this campaign are loosely inspired by characters from previous campaigns I did with my friends. There was a robot named Zoomy, and instead of just taking that name because none of you are familiar with the character of Zumi, I decided to come up with the name Treadmill. Absolutely, definitely, 100% not on the fly. Our intro song is Friends by Miracle of Sound. Our outro song will be different. It is called The Heist by Paper Yellow. And those songs, as well as all the other sound effects we use, can be found in the description below. Finally, I got a call to action to you this week. It's an oldie but a goodie. Tell one friend, one person you think might be interested in Quest Friends about Quest Friends. You can do it on social media, you can do it in person, you could even send them a signed, sealed envelope 
Although that would frankly be a waste of paper, but I, you could do it. Thanks so much for listening. We are back on schedule, which means our next episode will be released on Monday, February 26th. See you then. So, uh, Hop and Misha, yeah. we're going to flash back in time. Everyone has just left. Now you have the freedom to explore. Hey, I, actually, I'd like to go back to Mr. Mako's room because I want to look at all the stuff he burned. Okay, so you start walking back to that room and you go to open it and it is locked. <sighs> I do not have any lock picks, but I do have that magic key that I just bought. What is the magic key called? Uh, it is, I will know in like two seconds. Shaper key. The shaper key. I found it. All right, you just slap this putty on and it slowly creeps into the lock and disappears before popping back out with a little handle that you can turn to open it. Woo! And now you have a key that will always work on this lock. Yay! All right, you open it and you open the door uh, and step into the room, which is pitch black. Ah, oh, damn. She had the magic light key. Damn it. I forgot about that. I don't have any light sources. Uh, well, shoot, he says out loud. Do you have a light source, Misha? Yeah, I don't think I have anything that I can light up. However, in response to Hopper saying shoot, Misha is going to say, but I do not have any weapons, let alone a gun. I cannot shoot in this room. And this room is pitch black, so I cannot really shoot anything in this location, Hopper. No, no, not like I'm commanding you to shoot something. Shoot <laughs> is like a phrase oh. when, when something is bad. Like, we don't have a light source, so shoot. Oh, that is quite an interesting verb to use as an expression, but I unfortunately do not have a light source to provide. So, shoot, he's going to be like doing a, a thumbs up thing. <laughs> I think there are glow globes in the Explorer's pack. Yeah, two minor glow globes. <sighs> yes, okay. Oh, I don't have my pack though, because they took all of our stuff. We could look for a candle or something. Is there is there a light source? Like, is there another thing that you can click and it turns on? <laughs> give me, give me a roll. Okay. I'm just saying, give me one second. Uh, roll. I have an 11. Well, if you turn behind you, you remember that, that hole was the thing she used to take light and pull light, right? Yes. Well, you see a hole that looks an awful lot like that for the hallway right behind you. Could we try using the shaper key in it? Because uh, it's formed into a key now, right? Yeah, but a key for the room, not for well, the... Well, I said try. I didn't expect it to work. Okay, yeah, give me a try. Oh, that's a four. Uh, it breaks. No! <laughs> he just breaks. Damn it! How the hell's a damn it as it breaks? Well, I guess we'd better go to the creepy rooms on the third floor to look for candles. I hope no one's up there with a scythe. <laughs> I'm gonna intervene for a second. As you turn over, you hear a tiny voice saying, Touch me. That is terrifying. I don't like that at all. Don't go away. Touch me. Um, do I have to roll to figure out what's creepily chanting at me? The sound is coming from inside your head. Oh. It's not something that you're externally taking from around you. You just hear it in your brain. I touch my temples. <laughs> like, he's confused. This is just his first reaction to be like, uh. That looks dumb. <laughs> Touch me! We just got to turn to uh, Hop and be like, are you okay? Did you have a, a headache that I can assist you with? Do you hear anything, Misha? I hear your voice. <laughs> okay, good. So it's just me. Uh, <laughs> what did you hear? I'm all alone in the dark. Hold me. Is someone doing a, a, I believe it perhaps may be a telepathic connection, like the one Sock and I may have. Telepathic. Can I try to talk back to the voice? In your brain? Yeah, but I'm just going to start off with, hello. <laughs> I'm not sure how else to start. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Hi. Can you help me turn on a light? Touch me. <laughs> Damn it. Can I roll like a perception check to think about this? Yeah. 19. Finally. As you're feeling around, you reach into your pocket and you feel a bit of pain. Ow. As you move something around and you pull this thing out of your pocket and you realize that the Mako and Mauve pin had somehow accidentally gotten jabbed into your thigh. 
I forgot the fucking pin. And as soon as you pull it out, the voice stops. So Hopper will pull out the pin. Well, that was weird. The voice just stopped. I guess we can use the pin for some. I forgot we had this. Misha's just going to look confusingly at Cobb and be like, I, I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That makes one of us. Uh, can we try to stick the pin into the light thingamajig, the hole in the wall? Yeah, it does nothing. God damn it! Is there something I can manipulate the pin into doing, or is there like a pin-shaped hole on the wall? I'm gonna remind you that the pin was not in your pocket. Well, it, like, it was in your pocket, but specifically there's a- you see a little bit of blood on the pin. Because somehow once it was like in your pocket, at some point it got pushed into your thigh. So I pulled it out of my thigh. Does it take blood to work? I mean, you can roll to see. 13. No, I mean, it's not a cultish object. Like, you don't have, you're not gonna, like, put blood on it in order to make it run. Can I put it on to see if that helps? Like, pin it to my shirt? Yeah, you pin it to your shirt. You hear nothing. Can I scan the thing? Like, this is not Googling it. This is just scanning the hole to see if I can understand what, what its mechanism is. So the hole and not the pen. Can I scan both things? I want to scan both things. Okay, give me a scan first for the hole and then for the pen. All right, for the hole, it will be a roll of 16. Okay, so yeah, the way that works is essentially there are special kind of keys that hold light inside of them. Mm. And when you put the key into this hole, the light basically transfers into the walls. So, so long as you have a substance that can successfully hold onto this light and transfer it between rooms, it should work fine. Uh, but it has to be a special type of light. It can't just be like looking for a flashlight and flashing it into the hole. <laughs> no, it's a special type of light that works with this. It's it's this yellow type of like almost living light. It's like a fluid kind of. Okay, and I'm rolling for the pin and I got a one. So I am so sorry about that, Hallie. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely have no idea what to do with it. Is there anything else I can do to manipulate the pin? Like, it's on my shirt, but is there like a hidden catch on it or like a button that I need to press? Is there anything else in the room that can be manipulated with this? If the door is open, is a little bit of light in the room, like from the hallway? Tommy's pointing at your hand for whatever reason, at his hand for whatever reason. Emily and I are trying to metagame. Prick your hand? Uh, so yeah, I was going to ask if I could prick my finger, but then I and it didn't seem like blood activated it. So I'm just, I guess I'm gonna try to prick my finger. Okay, you prick your finger and as it goes in, you hear the voice say, yay! And as it goes <laughs> back out, you don't hear it anymore. Well, I thought of doing that. Yeah, she, she said that, but I thought that wouldn't work. Yeah. It's got blood on it now, but it's not working. It was like happy when you stuck it in and then once you stuck it out, you stopped hearing it again. Do I have to keep it in my skin? <sighs> Hopper realizing what this means just goes, <sighs> and then just sticks it in. Not like to the point where it's going to keep his finger from moving or anything, and then he's going to hold it in place, gritting his teeth. Yay! Touch me! I'm touching it! Do you have to touch the switch with your pin encrusted hand? I don't want to leave blood at a crime scene. We can clean it up after. What do you want? <laughs> For you to touch me! I am! I'm holding you with my finger! That's not me. What? Well, then what are you? I'm waiting in bed for you. <sighs> Hopper will slowly move to the bed, <laughs> checking for traps, and <laughs> just, like, sidle up and look at the bed, I guess. <laughs> so close. Do I have to get on the bed? You can, but you don't have to. Okay, but what what do you want? What is on the bed? I don't understand. Who would invent this? You're going to hear it start saying, I'm calling. And I want both Misha and uh, Hop to roll. Okay. 19. 3. Okay, Misha, you are really, you're like, the key to this mystery is that light hole. They said the bed, fuck it, this is it. This is where the answer is. <laughs> Hop, you see one of the four bedposts. You see a light start to emanate from the top of it. You know how like bedposts have that little like knob on top? From beneath the knob, you see some lights kind of. Yeah. Can I climb up on the bed and then look at it? Or is it tall enough that I don't have to climb on the bed? No, it's like, it's like, you know how like beds have those little bedposts that like go up like three feet? Oh, okay. So it's a short one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just going to look at it. Touch me. I touch it. Jesus Christ. So Hop, you use the pin hand and you touch the knob and it just kind of like, like a hatch. It just opens up. Uh, and as it opens up, you hear a voice, the voice go, yay. 
and then slowly disappear out of existence. And so you see a couple of things. At the bottom of this like little knob, you see one of those pins and it's connected to something called... It's connected to a cipher called recording gum. Recording gum is a piece of sticky food, question mark, that you chew for a few moments. It will record specific instructions on what to say and under which conditions to say it. It's usually pretty quiet, but it can be attached to some sort of external speaker. So it looks like in this case, it was attached to one of the pins. And as you open up, you also see the inside of this bedpost has been hollowed out and there are a bunch of papers inside of it. Ooh. Okay. I'm guessing that I can take the pin out of my finger now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hopper's going to take it out and kind of like wipe the blood on the side of this terrible, ugly green uniform. <laughs> and then... Actually, no, because you said it had like reddish brown lines on it, right? Uh, it has a little reddish brown emblem. Can I add it to the emblem to disguise it into the reddish brown color of the emblem? It actually looks a little bit better, to be honest. Yes! Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so Hopper will do that and then kind of shake the pin off and wipe the rest of the blood of the pin off and be like, Hey, I found something to Misha. Oh, <laughs> Misha's going to say like, do you find something to, to manipulate this light source pocket? I believe this is a key to the whole uh, endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> the key to the whole endeavor. <laughs> I don't think so. It looks like the pin wanted me to come to this bedpost. That was weird and I hated it. I hate this pin. Uh, but there are papers in here, which is great. Ah, uh, I see. What do these papers say? Uh, let's find out. All right, so you pull out all the papers. I'm just going to kind of go through them. I'm sorry for the high exposition dump. Go for it. So the first thing you see is you see a closed letter and it says mauve on it. The second thing you see is a map of the city's sewage systems and a bunch of calculations, which involve the queen's gifts, which include the number of gifts she receives on a daily basis, how the variety of the gifts that she seems to actually use, their general size and volume, basically all, all the things that are given to the queen. And you also see some other calculations relating to the city's garbage. And you see the note that says, take the best, burn the rest. The second thing you see is a description of an arm, a gauntlet-like thing. It's a pliable metal glove with wires crisscrossing over it. The palm has a circle with a gem-like shape carved into it. And uh, it has this note that says, The original model disguises itself as part of the wearer's body. Yikes. But as a result, forms an attachment that seems more parasitic than symbiotic. When under normal stress, it operates the same as any limb, but when put to its intended use, the device seems to pull energy from the rest of the user's body, inhibiting pain sensitivity, motor movement, and sound judgment. At my age, I need all three of those as much as I can. A different power source is needed. And next to that, there are a lot of items that are written and crossed off. And the one that's left is called Hematium, which is described as a bright red dust that's often used by weary or lazy travelers to lighten their gear. It's often used by stage nanos, which are this world's version of magicians, to create the illusion of flight. It's got great untapped energy, but why bother with that when you can make walking marginally easier? So it looks like it's a very good energy source, but people usually use it just to make things lighter. And the last thing you see is a selection of a book that's under the title Jagged Dream. The Jagged Dream is a cult determined on evolution of humanity through conflict. The cult is interested in creating worldwide conflicts to plunge humanity into growth through survival of the fittest. It organizes itself into small, isolated cells. Members wear a secret sign on their clothing or tattooed on their flesh. Each cell's symbol represents one of the ideals of the Jagged Dream. Those being conflict, action, and patience. Next to conflict, you see an arrow pointing to a small, a drawing of a small knife with a serrated blade. Next to action, you see a drawing of a black raptor swooping downward. And to the last one, for patience, you see it drawn to a clock with clearly visible gears, no times on it, and two hands. Ellie, what did you mean about clocks? Yeah, so you're back in this room with, with uh, Mauve and you're still talking to her. Well, I, I had this old friend, and he had a tattoo, like a clock, and he said it meant he was part of an organization, and pretty sure I saw that on Vera's hand as well. What organization did your friend say he was a part of? The, uh, Jagged Stone? <laughs> Jagged Dream, that's what it is. We, um, we want to help Mr. Mako, and we'll probably need both of your help, because we may or may not have unleashed a horrible, terrible evil that you may have sealed away 40 years ago. A what? So... Oh, yeah. Your, your friend Sue hired us to investigate a town, uh, and beneath that town, we found a machine intelligence that it attached itself to some kind of pod, uh, and we separated it from the pod to, to shut it down. 
but when we did, the pod opened and started spilling out black spiders, and these obsidian tiles started flying around, and there was a man in armor with horns. And we ran, but when we got back to Rhubarb, everyone was frozen and dead. And Sue? Shock sort of looks down at his feet and says, she didn't make it. I'm sorry. Well, I suppose when you prepare for the unexpected, you can sometimes still be surprised. And you said there was a man in horns. He was in the picture that Sue had with all of you. Told him it was a bad idea. Well, if if the Apocrita is back, then it would make a sense that the Jagged Dream was making their move now. The Jagged Dream is a, a cult. They're not, they're not a gang. Gangs are small. Gangs don't want to orchestrate worldwide conflicts. The Jagged Dream has been working f- since I was born to make a war that no one could escape and that would never end. Five years ago, in the country of Ankun to the south, they started a coup that plunged the whole country into war. And the fields of the Paranthian Empire have been scorched. They've had to go to other countries to get their food. And the only thing keeping this world together is the peace between Charmande and key and if the apocrypha is back and the queen is as paranoid as she's ever been is that why you let him get captured excuse me you said the only thing that's keeping things together is i didn't let anything happen to him we've been trying non-stop to get him out for the past three days treddy has gone personally by himself to break him out of jail. Why do you think there's so many cops on the street? I did, don't did, know. Did, did the news not tell you of the massive jailbreak? We've kind of been outside the city. Sorry, lady. I just figured you had a plan. Plans aren't my forte. Action is. And when you understand what love is, you'll understand that there's no way I would have just let this happen. Ellie grits her teeth and stares mauve down. And then Shock, oblivious to all this, just says, well, we have an opening into the palace, actually. Vera is at least for a moment letting us stay there, and at least as of now, she doesn't know yet that we're onto her, which means we can maybe get you inside. We can maybe shut down the Jagged Dream's weapon, and and we can get Mr. Mako out, and we can figure out how to stop the spiders. Uh, It'll be great. She looks at you and says, there's an awful lot wrong with this plan. But there's an awful lot worse with not doing it. Let's get the fucking work.